Look at the picture. See the skull. Visible Frankenstein controls the Brain Thoughts Broadcasting Radio, the Frankenstein Earphone Radio, the latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls. All right, everyone, welcome once more uh, to Frankenstein Control. I was thinking about how so many streamers, um, YouTube personalities, and the like uh, have a uh, sort of a Names for their most dedicated fans, like you know how the Grumps have the Lovelies mm, and, or the Cum uh, Dumpsters. Yeah, the, ugh, no, we're not that, <laughs> not that at all. Um, but uh, the other example I was going to use was Lissa watches a um, a girl on YouTube. She's like a kawaii artist, and her name is um, I think it's Pixie Locks. Mm -hmm. She likes her a lot, and she calls her fans a confetti club. Oh, <laughs> so I actually think you would probably really like her uh, uh, we'll put a pin uh, in that a yeah. YouTube music man that I like to listen to he plays the violin and he calls all of his fans stringies oh uh, that's a good one <laughs> which just makes me think of dirty thing I uh, know we're not gonna go there <clears throat> cause we're here um I was thinking we should have a term to greet all of our own dedicated fans and I was thinking that uh, Josh would work <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we'll start every episode and go, hi, Josh. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, man. Yeah, it's good. Anyhow, <clears throat> on to the show. Frankenstein Control was going to be brought to you tonight by the Loudon Museum, oh. uh, which is a real and completely unaffiliated with us uh, community institution in Leesburg, where I live. Uh, but they're going through some regime changes and rough patches right now. Uh, it's been a matter of some local renown. It's basically just the Town Historical Society. Uh, they're headquartered in, uh, I think, Town Hall, but also in this cool little, like, log cabin-like building. Uh, it's, like, right in smack dab in the middle of town. Uh, one thing that the Loudon Museum does uh, do that I really enjoy every year is um, run the ghost tours of mm -hmm. Leesburg. So, basically, you can... Uh, pay, you know, a small fee and you get to participate in these walking tours around town and they take you to haunted sites and mm -hmm. tell you about the spooks that haunt the place. And some say you can still hear the hacking of old Trichinosis Pete. You mean me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> b right is a local legend over there in Loudown. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, um, this is all like borderline real. Uh, they actually are having some staffing problems right now. Like, I don't really know what's going on. I, all I know is I read in the town newspaper that they fired their director and now like a bunch of the staff quit and they don't No! Play. They fired Slam Jeffries? Yes, they fired Slam Jeffries. No! I don't even know why they fired him. I mean, he didn't really... They just like the board just voted no confidence in him and they like, ousted him and then like the rest of the staff are like we don't know what's going on here we don't feel like sticking around for this so they quit. <laughs> and so the, the future of the museum is uh, like... The town council says that, like, you know, we're going to keep the museum going, nobody freak out, but, uh, you know, it's just sort of stuck in budget hell right now. So, mm. <laughs> um, because of that, this this all came about just as they were set to unveil a new exhibit earlier this summer, uh, revolving around uh, some newly discovered documents detailing the visit of one of the founding fathers to Loudoun County in 1788. Uh, I figured the least I could do is briefly tell you all the tales, since the museum is closed for the foreseeable future. And That's nobody, a lot of Fs. Yeah, nobody can see the exhibit, so I'll, I'll give you a snapshot. Mm -hmm. A brief, Ooh. a brief snapshot. You can snap my briefs anytime. <clears throat> the year is 1788. Uh, so I guess what had happened at the time was that a group of young tinsmiths apprentices had somehow gotten trapped in a surprisingly expensive rabbit warren uh, while they were out using their 40 minutes of allotted daily free time to search for <laughs> new ore veins in the hills surrounding the 60 acres that originally comprised the township of Leesburg. <laughs> Uh, initial rescue attempts failed, and the plight of the trapped boys became a major topic of conversation in surrounding states. Okay. Uh, eventually, this caught the attention of none other than Benjamin Franklin himself, <laughs> who pledged at once to lend his considerable intellect to solving the problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is our history. Don't laugh at it. I feel it's historical. <laughs> uh, he immediately designed some sort of clockwork digging contraption involving complex bifocal lenses, electric <laughs> kites, and Freemason blood magic. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so it's something for a blood board. <laughs> yes, basically. <laughs> Who do you think that's based on? Yeah, it's Benjamin <laughs> Ben Franklin's trick weapon. Blood yeah. Ben. <laughs> it's not at all based on Lovecraftian uh, mythos. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, he had his contraption transported as fast as he could to Northern Virginia. 
when he arrived with his invention two and a half months later, uh, <laughs> Franklin was informed by a local solicitor that the boys had long since been rescued by town constables and had managed to survive for so long in the Warrens by eating Timothy, who the boys adamantly insisted had been a mule. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, Franklin congratulated himself on a job well done and prepared to set off when the young solicitor pointed out that he hadn't really done anything for the boys at all and, in in fact, had run over one of their dogs on his way into town. (laughs) Um, Famous for his witticisms and rebuttals, Franklin famously replied, Verily, I attest that this gentleman is of poor character and aspires to lie with children in the manner of man and wife. (laughs) 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 And then he left. That's the colorful local yarn you all missed out on oh. this summer with the shuttering of the Loud Museum. I hope they reopen soon, <laughs> at least in time for the ghost tour. Oh, how educational! So I want to see Franklin's uh, eighty-eyed ghost. <laughs> Speaking of Franklin, where did you come from, eighty-eyed ghost? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Speaking of Franklin, welcome to Franklin's Time Control. I'm your host, the Canadian animated turtle, Taylor Russell. <laughs> To my left is Ada Ship. I'm Ada, also known as AC Moore, which was formerly known as Ben Franklin's. <laughs> <laughs> and in front of me, as always, is B Rye. I'm B Rye, and I'm Franklin, the GTA character. <laughs> I think his name was Franklin. <laughs> Who's Franklin? He's the the guy with a. He's the young man that you can play as in the new the GTA, GTA 5. 5. Oh, do, oh we, yeah, there's, there's Trevor, the wastoid, and there's Ding Dong, the washout, and then there's Franklin, the, the new blood. Yeah, the guy that sees hallucinations. That's Trevor. No, doesn't, doesn't Franklin, like, see Bigfoot or something running around <laughs> at one point? <laughs> Like, you go on a quest to, like, find Bigfoot, and, like, there's a dog that's talking to you. What? Uh, there's, I'm pretty sure that's a Trevor mission. Because I I remember Franklin being there for that. It might be one of the ones where, uh, you can do it as any character. Okay. I don't remember. I I distinctly remember you playing this, and, and your character, which I remember was Franklin, was talking to a dog, and the dog was telling him to chase down Bigfoot. Oh, well, then, no, that you have a dog. His name is Chop. And he, he like, you talk to him. He doesn't talk back. You just give him does. orders. He was talking. <laughs> Are you sure? I remember this. The dog was talking to you, and then, like, it wasn't your dog. Like, the dog ran up to you and was like, Hey man, I need you to help find my, my owner. He's like stuck in the in the mountains. Are you sure he didn't come up to you and go, Hi, Bobbis! I need you to help my miss to get an axe back. I also smoke a lot of rocks. <laughs> Despite most accents and this being from traditional sources of fantasy accents, for some reason they chose New Jersey for me. <laughs> the, that, that, this act, that, that, now we're just referencing Skyrim, yeah. folks at home, by the way. There's but a- I swear... There's right. a mission in Grand Theft Auto where a talking dog tells you to rescue his master and you end up tracking down Bigfoot. <laughs> that, and then at the end of it, the guy's like, man, I didn't know your your dog can talk. He's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> now, I don't want to argue with you because everything you said is entirely possible. <laughs> However, are you positive this isn't a lucid dream that you had when you fell asleep in my room while I was playing Grand Theft Auto? That is entirely possible. <laughs> that happened That happened a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have sleepy-ass bitch disease. I can't help it. <laughs> the same thing Ben Carson suffers from. Uh-huh. That's why our chair budget is so high. You have to eat, keep... Hit me in the head with chairs to wake me up. <laughs> this is all a reference to something awful bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. It's one of those uh, Levi Johnson blogs. Oh, okay. Levi is a character in Attack on Titan. But we talked enough about that it's last It's also episode. kind of Jean. It is, which I'm wearing. Today's episode of Break Eye Control is sponsored by Levi Comfort Fit Jeans for Fat Butts. <laughs> you got a big old dunk? You got some junk in the trunk? Put on a pair of our skonky britches. <laughs> Tronk is spelled T-R-O-W-N-K. Uh, in case anyone was wondering. 
<laughs> that is also part of the catchphrase. It is very long. Do they have a, a fart absorber built into the seat of the pants? You biggity bet you do. <laughs> it's the same fart absorber they use on the space station. <laughs> <laughs> Using space age technology, we capture farts and convert them into algae. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> it what? It creates energon. It creates Jontron? No, no, it doesn't create semi-racist dork butts. It creates Energon, the cube that Transformers seek. The, today's episode of Today's episode of Frank Side Control is brought to you by Energon Cubes. The energy what Autobots seek. Autobots, look, it's that energy what we seek. <laughs> Bumblebee, go and get that energy what we seek. I forgot what Bumblebee sounds like in that show. Oh, that was me, Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Megatron. Today will be a great day indeed. Starscream. Oh, I need my throat lozenge. <laughs> Get it from the bodega. <laughs> Welcome to the bodega. I love it. Thank you. I need a throat lozenge for my master Megatron. But I will poison it. No one will ever know. Do robots uh, do robots susceptible to poison? <laughs> <laughs> that was typed into Megatron's uh, Google, <laughs> Google, <laughs> Google search four hundred times after he passed out from too much energon. <laughs> What does Energon do in the context of Transformers? It's just like their all-purpose, like, thing that's good. Like, oh, we can, it'll supply energy to the whole base. It's a crippling, it's a metaphor for our crippling dependence on fossil fuels. Mm. <laughs> it's the thing that gave me my accent. I forgot the name of the robot who sounded like that. I think it's Lugnut. Fuck if I know. <laughs> I know very little about Transformers outside of my cursory memories of childhood. Now, I did not like Transformers much, <sighs> but I'll damn sure tell you that I cared for Beast Wars. Something. Uh, yeah, something I loved Beast Wars. That's the theme song. <laughs> Even, you don't remember? Even now, no. I remember. That struck chords in my memory. Yeah, you don't remember? Fucking every day, you'd see, like, Rat Trap run into credits, and it's like... I'm coming, Donobot! <laughs> uh, you know, the one thing I remember from that series forever is that, like, I remember two things about that show. Mm-hmm. One is Megatron had this penchant for going, yes, and it was really funny. <laughs> Wait, his name wasn't Megatron. It was like Mega Rex Dino. No, it was Megatron. It was Megatron yeah, still? Yeah. Really? Well, like, why was he called Optimus Primal? I, I think they would have switched up Megatron's name to something. Are you sure you're not just confusing what the action figures said on the box with what their names were on the <laughs> That's show? That's also very true. Well, anyway, Megatron, whatever his name really was, would always go, yes, for everything. Uh-huh. And like I thought there was humor for some reason and then the other thing I remember is the horrible like creepy doll creature thing that like gained sentience and like was like this half man half robot abomination thing and you were supposed to care about it by the time it sacrificed itself it was really fucked up I can't remember the name of it I don't remember that at I, all. I remember something about yeah. the character was called Organoids. It was horrible. It looked like a fucking SCP. It was d- very distressing. Like I, I remember like a like some kind of half robot, half plant woman, oh, God. and like that represented like the new level of Transformer evolution or something, or like they were getting because yes, or like they were getting infected with uh, organic parts or something. I remember that. Uh... There was, like, the early series where they just looked like straight up, you know, flush-skinned animals when they were in their beast form. Yeah. Uh, and then they got the trans-metal versions, which was mid, mid-season, mid or mid-series, I should say. Mm-hmm. And that's when they all got a vehicle mode. Yeah. And oh, was... there it is! I found it! Its name is Transmutate! Transmutate? It fucking looks like this! Oh, God! <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I remember that fucking thing. Put this in the thumbnail. People need to suffer with me. He looks exactly like an SCP. I told you. Wow. He's horrible. And, like, I remember him talking in this really gross, like, stilted, childish, cavemanish, fucked up kind of way. 
it was really weird. I remember not understanding the parts of the show that had him in them and not caring to, so I sort of just <laughs> tuned him out and focused on the parts of the show I did like. So, you know, like Tarantula or Tarantulox or whatever his name was. Tarantulox. He was cool. He was awesome. He was the one who, he was one of um, the Decepticons, obviously. And he was really cool looking. I thought he was really, I think, Tarantulor? Somebody, whatever it was. Whatever his name was, well, he was, was cool. There was well, Scorponok. Scorponok, well, there was Quick Strike, who I liked a lot. There was, was Scorponok, and there was Widowmaker. You're thinking of Black Arachne. That's the one! Uh, what I liked about uh, Tarantulox, we'll just call him that, <laughs> uh, is <laughs> that... I'll take some. I'll take some tarantula locks on my bagel. Thank you. <laughs> is that his vehicle mode? Once they got them, uh, they got vehicle modes. They got vehicle modes. It was rad as shit. Is this series the precursor to the horrifying Truckoverse cartoon that you keep seeing in the kids' waiting room? It I could think, be. I think it's the missing link. <laughs> it's the missing it. link. Yeah. <laughs> Leave looking. it to the show with the main character who's a gorilla to have the missing link. Um, but no, uh, his vehicle mode, Tarantulox's, was he turned into a motorcycle. Oh, and that was oh. rad as shit. This giant ass spider with motorcycle wheels, <laughs> fore and aft, <laughs> racing through the desert with fangs sticking out of him. Oh, it was cool. <laughs> I thought you hated spiders. Not him. He was all, not spiders that turn into a motorcycle. <laughs> and tra- so if all the little spi- <laughs> if all the little woodlouse spiders in your room would turn into little motorcycles, you'd be okay with them. We wouldn't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's metal as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you just spend your days build, building little ramps for them. Oh, fuck yeah. Little uh, burning tire pits for them to launch over. That'd be awesome. A whole bunch of tiny, tiny spider school buses. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so activity time. Uh, homework assignment right now. Uh-huh. I, w- I want you all to think of your Beast of War robot. Mm-hmm. What animal do they transmorph into? Mm-hmm. What car mode do they now have? And what's their name? Okay. We're going to pause it for a sec. I want, I, I'm serious about this. Okay, we did some thinking. <laughs> All right, we're, we're back. We're back. <laughs> Who's going to go first? Uh, I'll go first. Yeah, go for it, v Uh Mine would be a hyena. Uh-huh. Uh, his vehicle mode is he turns into that thing that McLeach drove around in uh, Rescuers Down Under, and his name is Laugh Track. <laughs> you know... <laughs> There is nothing about that I didn't like. I didn't think there would be. It's actually cool. Yes. I was expecting we were all going to be jokey jokes, but that's like legitimately rad. I know. I love that show. It filled me with creative energy. Oh, my God. Dude, laugh track. That's fucking cool, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, I- I'll be thinking about that later, actually. Well, I'm... Never mind. Hey, Ada. <laughs> so, uh, my animal form is a capybara. Nice. My, uh, because they're like the most chill animal and they're just the, the most me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I uh, agree. Does it eat tremendous amounts of CC's pizza and <laughs> this one does? And vomit in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> I vomited toilets, goddammit. <laughs> you vomited in the sink once and I remember it. When? When I was less drunk than you, but only slightly. <laughs> when I was a young mort hog. Okay, it, whatever. So it's a capybara. <laughs> yeah, she's a capybara, and her vehicle it, mode is a jet ski. <laughs> I, was, I was considering having me, mine be a jet ski that just works on land inexplicably. <laughs> no, it only works on water. It's completely useless. <laughs> it's it's entirely for her own her own fun. It's to just jet around on the water. It doesn't get involved in battles. And, and despite the fact that she's a very chill animal and a very fun vehicle, uh, she's a Decepticon oh. named uh, Capifira. <laughs> cool! I'm good. down with that. I'm and, down with Capifira. And nobody knows why she's on the villain team. <laughs> she's not no evil. Fun. She barely interacts with them. Yeah. Because the bad girls have more fun. Uh, so mine would be a... Um, what was it? The... It would be an Autobot. What were they called? Maximals? I think yeah. they were called. Yeah. Something like that. So mine would be a Maximal. Um, it would be a Howler Monkey. <laughs> well, naturally. A Howler Monkey. like So, you know, medium size. But he can somehow transform to a full-sized ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> and I bequeath it the name Cream Dream. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's funnier, Cream Dream or Cream Scream? 
<laughs> I, I like cream scream. <laughs> Why? None of that has anything to do with the actual features of the animal. They, they usually do. <laughs> because you trusted me with a simple task. That's like your idea. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm, I'm becoming the creep scream. I tell you, yeah, because oh. yeah, like it, it, the, there are it's the the ice cream truck looks nothing like the howl, howler monkey. <laughs> like at least all the vehicles or animals and like robots share a similar color scheme. Or like you can see where like oh yeah, Megat- Megatron's. Uh, Dinosaur tail becomes his arm. Like you can see how the parts work together. Oh yeah, it became like a cool claw. <laughs> yeah, there's absolutely no logic the, between it's like within the show <laughs> of how this howler monkey turns into truck, an ice cream truck. The truck is significantly larger than the monkey. Yeah, you're like, like a, you're like a two foot tall monkey that looks like a monkey, and then it's like an actual real size ice cream truck that's like white and pink. <laughs> With a menu on the side. <laughs> okay, what I like to think is that in his Autobot form, <clears throat> he looks <laughs> in his maximal form. <laughs> he, mm-hmm. he looks like uh, you know Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Imagine him in a RoboCop costume. <laughs> Uh, and there's like there's, there's like that's bright, not what a howler monkey looks like. There's, there's bright colors and sprinkles. <laughs> All over the metal plating, uh-huh. but then that all of that is uh, you can see the howler monkey portion in the in the in the in the face mask, mm-hmm. and then like bits of hair like popping out of the joints in places, as if he's wearing a costume and not actually a robot. Uh huh. <laughs> Autobots, we're moving out. No one tell Cream Scream. <laughs> And so Creed Scream's main motivation for, you know, uh, cruising with the Maximals Mm -hmm. is that he wants to bring both Cream and Scream to the wasteland. (laughs) This, those, those fucking Philistine animals out there, they don't know what they're missing. He's got Cybertronian Cream for days and he's willing to share it. The secrets of man's white flower. Of, Of what? Of man's white flower. Sounds like There's a ice cream. There's no. F- <laughs> <laughs> you know how King Louie wanted man's red flower, i.e. Oh. fire. Oh, that takes on a completely wanted- different meaning. <laughs> now, <laughs> he wants to deliver the white flower, okay. ice cream, the delicious invention not made by humans, but instead by robots from outer space. Uh, they fell in like a fucking meteor or some shit, right? Yeah. Or wait, no, 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 no. no. They were like, <clears throat> oh. Oh my god, I'm having a brain blast. I, really, I think I'm either I'm manufacturing memories or I'm remembering that it was this great battle in space. They were like <laughs> fighting each other in like spaceships and they hit each other and then they both crashed yeah. at different places in Something the same like that. in the same biome. He is only for the record, Cream uh, Scream is only allowed to dispense a vanilla ice cream because if that thing if a thing that looked like that rolled up on you, transformed into Robocop Harry and the Hendersons, and then sprayed a bunch of brown stuff at you. <laughs> Would, it would not inspire confidence. He just goes, you just, he's rolling up on you. Like the song is really loud. First off, like the it's that classic it's bass boosted. Yeah. And when he rolls up on you in truck form, and then he he transforms. He maximizes towards the enemy, and he's back in his horrible RoboCop form, and he just goes, "Well, hello there, boys and girls." It's your pal Cream Scream. <laughs> well, I'm just rapping, ready to, to dispense some chocolate! <laughs> and everyone's like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. yes! <laughs> I want to I get back on track for a split second to talk <laughs> about track? two other things that this were This whole cool. episode's off the track, baby! I, I, I just want to... Paint a middle image of like when uh, Cream Scream fights. He'll he like uses his chocolate ice cream as a weapon. Mm. I basically they were, just pictured a flamethrower that just shoots that. Yeah, 
And, uh, and the flame flamethrower, of course, is uh, on his back and pointed down, so he has to bend over and like point his rear end at people to use it. His bright but, red rear end. Yes. Oh my god. And they were really worried about that being like, oh, the people are gonna think it's poof now that we did all this all by coincidence. So anytime people get, well, anytime the transformers get hit with it, they're like, oh, it's so cold and doesn't smell. <laughs> well. See, that didn't test well with, uh, with with focus groups, so they they, they actually did think it was shit. Uh, so they, <laughs> on many levels, they uh, introduced some significant alterations to Cream Scream's design, and instead his flamethrower uh, like weapon now shoots to avoid any uh, confusion that it might be poop, and instead shoots from the front of his lower region <laughs> and, and it changes to vanilla. I'm so. Sorry. <laughs> It's sometimes lemon flavor. Oh. Yes. <laughs> when he's out of vanilla. <laughs> Two things that I thought were cool that Megatron did have happen to him. Ooh, was yes. When you, he, you have actual memories. Did he start the show as a T-Rex? I think he did, right? I, mean, I, I think what, they, what the Transformers always do is they like crash down mm-hmm. and then... Uh, <laughs> Like they're they just have the robot forms and then they scan what's ever around them and then that allows them to have either vehicle or whatever transformation. That's right. So I guess he scanned the dinosaur at the same time. No fossils. Mm. They, they yeah they crash where there's a whole bunch of like skeleton skeletonized fossilized dinosaurs. Wow, they sticking can, around. You just answered a question I've had for a really long time. Because mm-hmm. I'm like. Hey, how the <laughs> fuck are some of them dinosaurs? Yeah. Or are they just are they, li- are they living in a Flintstones esque universe <laughs> where gorilla and and T Rex existed as one? Where the gorilla could lie down with the Stegosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> and lo, it was sin. <laughs> um, but I remember that when he got his vehicle mode, some of them weren't like full vehicles. They just got like transformy, um, like move powers mm-hmm. that's a terrible I they got wheels they got wheels or, or treads shit. yeah like Rat Trap just had like wheels in his elbows and knees and just rolled around like that looked like a giant fucking dorky toy like a giant cat I, toy I, I remember, <laughs> yes. I remember and one of them uh, the, the ferret transformer just like had a ball on the tip of his nose that he <laughs> <laughs> rolled around on like that <laughs> Oh my and god! He, he ran out of batteries a lot. <laughs> I remember um, Rat Trap. He smelled having, like ozone. <laughs> I remember Rat Trap having that voice. Uh, that that one Canadian guy who does like a whole bunch of shit for like Inuyasha. I think he's Koga in Inuyasha. Oh god! Yeah. And I think he was Duo Maxwell in the Gundam Wing dub. I can almost remember his name. Yeah, <laughs> Jack Optimus. <laughs> we gotta go see Cheater. What was his name? <laughs> Cheetah. Cheetor. Cheetor. I think it was Cheetor. Yeah. We gotta go see Cheetor. <laughs> His name wasn't Cheetor before he became a cheetah, and we intrinsically know what a cheetah is. So. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what Cheetor's voice like, so please accept this facsimile. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am Cheetor, you see. And then he's immediately in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he sharing a cell with? There have been nasty rumors about me for years, and it took Hannibal Burris to get them believed. <laughs> for some reason. Hannibal Burris would, uh, he would turn into, I like to think, like a, like a macaroni penguin. Yeah. And his vehicle form is like a rocket ship. Um, because that's rad. What's a macaroni penguin? A mac- it's that I drew you. I made you a macaroni picture, Edda. It's an it's actual a kind penguin. Of, okay. It's an actual kind of penguin. It's the um, kind of penguins that have the fucked up eyebrows. That's okay. Yeah, they're called macaroni penguins hmm. for because they got macaroni attached to their faces because they're fucking so. doofuses. <laughs> yeah. It said so in the Steve Irwin documentary. He's like, oh, they the fucking doofuses. <laughs> All them penguins are fucking doofuses, Terry. They watch as I go over there and give them a good old stroke on the brow. (laughs) Crocky. I wanted to quickly say that Megatron got jets in his thighs when he was uh, a T-Rex and he got his vehicle form. Uh Like giant jet engines folded out and he flew around. And then the best thing of all happens, he gets pushed into lava and becomes a fucking dragon. What? He was Megatron's (laughs) final form is a big ass red dragon. You're fucking kidding me. I'm not kidding. He was rad as fuck. He was red as fuck. He was red as fuck and rad as fuck and I got his giant ass awesome toy when I was like 11 years old and it was my favorite thing ever (laughs) for several years and I used it that Christmas 
uh, to scare a uh, baby cousin of mine who was very unpleasant and rambunctious and bit me. And he he was a horrible little hellion, but for some reason he was scared shitless of Megatron. <laughs> so, the hey. only thing more evil than me. And then Megatron, it's kind of needless to have a vehicle form when you're a fucking dragon. Yeah. But he still did. Uh-huh. He turned into a dragon car. <laughs> what? what uh, that's the opposite of, of, of what a dragon does. Yeah. He's the opposite. What? what? <laughs> see, right? see, that's why the dragon should have been a jet ski, too. Because that way he could have he could have the air in his dragon form. He could have the land in his uh, walking around biped form. And then he'd have the water as a, as a jet ski. And Starscream can ride around on him and have fun. We must go and intercept the Maximals at their aquatic base. Capifera, are you up to the task? I, I mean, I guess. It, it sounds kind of fun, but uh, you guys aren't going to hurt anybody or anything, are you? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, no. Okay, let's go. See? <laughs> Is this yes backwards, please? <laughs> trip down memory. I haven't thought about Beast Wars in a really long time mm-hmm. and suddenly the memories just kept a flowing out and also a lot of the ice cream started flowing out too. I apologize. Oh, Taylor, part. Taylor, that's, that's not ice cream. Oh. Why is it so cold? It's frozen though. yogurt. Oh, oh. yay! <laughs> Made of feces. Oh, dude. <laughs> Forever rely on feces. <laughs> now even you know I am a menace. I hand you the secrets to save the entire human race and the entire universe.